Oh my god, Nicki Minaj is killing me. Yes, I'm in my PJs. I went out last night. I haven't gone out in like forever. I did a little bit too much and I've been basically useless. So let's get to this Real Housewives of Potomac reunion part four. So Nikki is like off the back. You saw the preview last week where she's like, well, Ashley, you had no storyline. She was on her. She was like, girl, we saw you with your family. It was kind of like you and your family and then Potomac. And Ashley couldn't deny that she had no storyline. But in Ashley's defense, she has been on the season for six years and she has had storyline. So sometimes... You know, you're slow and you're trying to catch up and attach yourself to other people's storyline. But it was interesting to see Candace defend her because I was like, ooh, okay, we made up. That's good. Then she jumps to Robin and Giselle. Like, Robin, why do you act like you and Giselle have one brain? Because she's always like, we did this, like, we did that. Then they went into the whole spill of, are you guys lesbians? I was like, I was like, all the crap people tweet about this show is what she is ask it i was like i am finished i am murdered and they were like no that they, they, she asked more questions did you share a bed have you shared a bed before and they were like yeah but they now start playing with it then they asked um robin if you were giving money to sleep with a woman who would you pick and giselle answers for her she's like well if we're being paid then i'll sleep with robin and Nikki's like, why are you answering for her? Then eventually Robin says Nikki. But Nikki's like, girl, you said that because your girl is going to be jealous. Then we jump to Ash, well, Juan and Michael's relationship. And Nikki's like, she finds it odd that Juan is entertaining Michael after he says he wants to, like, you know, fellatio him and still stuff like that. Which, it is interesting, right? Because if a woman said that to your husband, I feel like the wife would not be cool if they kept texting so Robin makes a good point. She's like, he didn't take it serious. And Nikki's like, yeah, that she's not saying that anything's wrong with it because she's a big advocate for the LGBTQ um, society. <laughs> but she asks a reasonably shady question. Does one have other gay friends? <laughs> and as she jumps, she's like, my man ain't gay. What the hell is going on? But this is literally, she's asking everything that Andy cannot ask. And it is juicy oh my god then she goes in on giselle about her looks talking about you always going on karen's age and looks do you think your look is fading or is it just a different look i was like i am dead like nikki is she needs to come back every freaking reunion at this point because this is epic this was epic like i cannot then um they talk about the whole ray saying that giselle was gonna you know basically he needs to date someone before her looks fade and stuff like that and just not revealed that she was hurt but then you know she lashed out with the whole wishing ray death or saying he will be dead before that happens which was kind of in line with the whole looks fading and stuff like that so this segment was not that interesting but i'm just like she's saving candace and wendy and mia for the later segments because i think she's getting the easier people so she's on ashley now, oh my god, I am excited. I'm just watching and like making my videos in between. Love, love, love. So they go in on Karen. Karen's one wasn't she really you can tell she really likes Karen. She didn't say anything disrespectful to Karen. She was even saying, like, oh, it looks like you and Ray's marriage is um doing better, like you guys are all lovey dovey and everything. And she brought up the whole Karen reading Giselle fulfilled. So it was still not a negative thing for Karen for um Karen because basically it was about Giselle. She was like, next time you tell her this ain't for you, maybe she should shut up. Then we get to Mia, she starts out good. She asked about Mia's mom and how um Mia felt hurt by the mom saying when you were younger, you used to annoy me because you acted like your dad. But Mia was like, so Nikki was like, did you tell her it hurts you? And she's like, yes, but I'm trying to understand. You know her mom is a recovering addict. So, but the good news is that they're all in a better place. Her mom is watching the kids now. So it, that, that little bit ended good. But I got what Nikki was saying because mother-daughter relationships sometimes can be stressful. And we tend to not address them. And we just like let them keep going until you know either people basically the relationship is broken to bits and pieces and you can't even get nothing back so i get that that we should address our hurts and traumas from even our, our own moms then she gets into mia having like three sums with her husband apparently they still do which is like i would not be sleeping with an old man of that age and still be bringing in a woman to do what sir 
Oh, hell no. I feel like that's crazy. Because Gordon to me is like, he's rich, so I might, you know, go ahead with it, but not with the threesome. Like, you got me effed up. Like, get out of here. But yeah, it was crazy. Then Nikki asked the question, so y'all that married older men, if you had your own money, basically, would you have done it? And you guys know from last week how Ashley was like, yeah, she was attracted to Michael. Anyways, we get into it. That is so funny. So it's still Amiya. Amiya is being asked about her strip club past. And she's still saying she's an entertainer, even though she got naked and was paid for it. So I don't know. Nikki is kind of like over it. She's like, okay, girl, you were an entertainer. You got it. Then they talk about, does she find it? Um, does she like when other people's partners are attracted to her? Or other men are attracted to her? And she's like, yeah, she's used to being a sex symbol. And... Nikki asked her specifically, like, what did you mean about Eddie couldn't look you in the face? And she was like, because Wendy was so insecure trying to control everything he said. Like, initially, he wrote Mia, like, the person he was attracted to, and Wendy made him erase it. So, Nikki's like, yeah, I think she played herself during that because that wasn't cute. Like, he looked so insecure. And Wendy agrees. But Wendy's like, girl, how are you married to a man and talking about <clears throat> another person's husband? I mean, it's like, Gordon doesn't care, this and that. And she tries to read her with the threesomes. She told you she has threesomes. Like, you can't read nobody with their own tea. But yeah, it was just crazy. So, Nikki staged it, right? Because she pivots right to Wendy. She's like, girl, like, you were kind of confusing this season because you came in as this commentator, this well-educated, well-spoken woman. And next thing, you're doing candles, you're doing, like, booty shots and all this stuff. Then she brings up that, was Eddie following booty models and Wendy is laughing hysterical, which makes me feel like she's lying. And she says that never happened and he wouldn't get away with it. So meaning that she watches what he does on social media. Then the next minute, Nikki asked about a specific booty model. That is that why Wendy got her body enhanced so that she could keep up with the booty models and stuff. And she's like, I don't know who he's following, but five minutes ago, you just said, that Eddie wouldn't get away with it because someone like Wendy would definitely be monitoring who he follows because that's who she is. Like, he couldn't even answer questions honestly. And I'm just like, girl, mm -mm. Wendy and Mia just bicker back and forth. And I'm like, oh, I'm irritated. And apparently Mia had sex at the Waffle House. I'm like, why do we need this information, Wendy? Wendy, you had us, but I feel like you're losing us at the same time. Then we get to Candace and she asks her a very important question. Like, girl... Why would your mom want to mess with your marriage this way? Like, do you tell her? She's like, I do. I stopped talking to her for a few weeks, but she doesn't listen, blah, blah, blah. And Nikki is like, what if you had kids with this guy? And your mom is like willing for, apparently she told Candice it was because of TV. She said that for TV purposes to break up a marriage that is actually affecting you now in your house. Like, it doesn't make sense. And she's like, oh, she'll hear from you, Nikki. I'm like, she shouldn't need to hear from no stranger. She should hear from the pain in your voice. She should hear from the pain in Chris's voice. But it was just crazy. Then we get into her album sales and everything. And Nikki was being fucking... Sh Ooh, can I say that on YouTube? She was being so shady. She's like, so how much did he sell? And Candy said 500000 or half a million. Well, 500000 same thing. But the paperwork said 20000 Um, <clears throat> Then she was like, which charts were you on? Because... Candice claimed she was on Billboard and iTunes and she gave her the numbers, which now the way the 500,000 went to 20,000, I don't know if she, I, I mean, I don't really listen to Candice music, so I don't know if she charted. And even if I listened to it, I wouldn't know if it charted that high or whatever. But Nikki has a lot of doubt and she's like rolling her eyes, making her faces. And I'm just like, oh my God, like this is crazy. Then she gets to the song. She's like, oh, I like your song. Like I even said you on Instagram. She's like, yeah, thank you. Um, she was, she now said they premiered another video of Candace's, which same, you know, sounded good. Then she's like, well, I can hear other tune in drive by. Can you give us a little bit of a cappella? And Candace is like mortified, but she can't sing. So I'm not understanding why she just doesn't want to do the singing. Like that was weird. That was weird. She like looked mortified for like a few minutes. It felt like. So she finally sings, which is great. I don't know why she hesitated. She was so nervous. Then everybody cheers for her. She did really good. And you ended on a happy note. You know, that was the end of Nicki Minaj's segment. 
Chris gets on the stage. He's been drinking. You saw him with a cup in the previous um, episode. That his piss, the line of questioning was this, it was that. And everybody's like, why are you mad? This was good for Candice. Candice is like, has so much exposure on her music. Like that last five to ten minutes was all about Candice's music. And then she did so well singing it. So it just didn't make sense. Then the men leave the stage. I guess they came to say hi to um, their, to Nicki Minaj. The guys leave, then Nikki gives them a good toast, then she appreciates them and Andy. I was like, oh, this is so cute. 